Testing, testing, testing. Aha, yes. Okay. Looks as if we're live. Um, how's that camera angle actually? Not too bad. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me for this sort of impromptu, uh, casual, change some harp strings and hang out for a bit. So it's not intended to be a harp changing tutorial um, because there's lots of great ones online, but uh, I don't know, I'm just going to change these strings because most of these are actually from when I originally got this harp, which is almost six years ago now. And I, I, I need to do some regulation and it's always good to change strings first if you're going to change strings anyway. Um, let's just check in here. I see a few people in the audience. Hello, hello everyone. Can you hear me okay? How's the volume level? I didn't actually rig up a, a lavalier mic, um, but... Uh, Hi from Switzerland. Hey, happy hour in Ontario, Phyllis. Um, yeah, let me know. I can turn the volume up more if you need to. Um, and hopefully I look reasonably in focus. Now I've got another, I've got my webcam set up here so that you can also sort of see a little bit. Again, it's not intended to be a tutorial, but that way maybe you can see a little bit better what it is I'm doing. Um, volume is good. Thanks, Martha. Thanks, Hope. Excellent. Hi. So, yeah, these strings, I changed this top C last night because I wanted to just make sure <laughs> I remembered how to do these because uh, it's a slightly different process than, say, the gut strings on my pedal harp. And um, And so, uh, yeah, just to make sure I remember how to do it. So these strings are, of course, uh, the fluorocarbon strings. And um, as I say, most of them are actually from when I originally got the harp. So they've lasted six years. They're still in pretty good shape, but I feel I kind of hear them in the sense that they don't maybe stay as true as they used to. Um, and then I, I know there was a region here, I think from this F, F G A B C right here, where I have had a lot of breakages. This A was broken like 12 or 13 times. Um, and I know Camac sent me, they, they switched, uh, used to be a German company, I think, producing the strings, and now they switched to um, uh, Severas, right? Uh, the, the, the French um, French company that makes a lot of uh, fluorocarbon strings. Um, let's see, how was the position of this? Maybe I will move this. Just a little bit further over. Maybe shrink it down just a tiny bit. Mm. All right. How's that? You can see me a little better as I move around. Can you see the harp enough there? Maybe not. Maybe yes. Um. Anyway. So, but the rest of these have has lasted forever. So let's <laughs> let's get started. Um. And again, this is just a chance to kind of hang out. So if you have any questions, um whether it's about harp maintenance or about harps or travel or anything, uh, fire away. I've got the chat up here so I can um, catch that. Hello, Fairy Fox. Um, and I'm just going to start changing them. So when I change strings, I typically like, if I'm doing a, a complete change of strings, I typically like to start from the top and go down because that way I can check the string I'm, uh, I've just changed with a string beneath it. So on the pedal harp in particular, you can always uh, get the same sound right here on the lever harp you can get a G sharp and an A flat but on the pedal harp you can always make the string beneath the string you're changing sound the, the, the same sound as the string you're changing should be so it's a quick and easy way to just check the tuning and also again when it's first on and it's very, very flat you can also it's just an easy way to check are you anywhere near the, the ballpark of where you want to be um, so, uh, harp and piano, and um, so what do we got here? The Kamak harps, of course, have these little. Uh, oh, I see. Great, the delay. There we are. Have these little um, dowels uh, as anchors. I, I like to use the cotton gauze. The little <laughs> dentist cotton gauze uh, is a great, easy way to um, create an anchor. And then, of course, um, there's the string buttons that Dusty Strings came out with, which I, I think supposedly aren't suitable for gut, but I have actually I think I have one string button on here because 
I had a very short length of string and, and uh, it was an easy way to tie the bottom and not slip. Um, so it's a great idea to use an opportunity when you're doing a, a complete string change to do a little bit of maintenance and dust things a little bit. So I'm just gonna dust along here and then I've got a Q-tip that I'm just gonna kind of dust in here. Uh, it's, it's, it's looking good, everything looks good, but just to take that opportunity, I don't, uh, I mean, when I was traveling, yes, I put a dust cover over my harp, but uh, normally at home, I don't put a dust cover over the harp. And so this is just a good opportunity to kind of do some dusting, do a little maintenance, keep the harp feeling happy. Um, uh, Phyllis, do I order my fluorocarbon strings direct from Chemex? So um, uh, I order from the Virginia Harp Center uh, just because they're somehow I, that seems closer, I guess. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. I bought the harp from the Virginia Harp Center, so I've just always ordered the strings from them. But because I'm in Canada, uh, you are coming across the border. So yeah, you could uh, potentially order it direct from Chemex. These current strings that I have, Chemac actually sent me because again, they switched providers and, and to try and see whether these are gonna deal with that issue of the, like a bunch of breakages in, in the second octave. Um, yeah, we don't. I don't think there's a harp store in Canada that carries these as far as I know, which is too bad. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, you bought a bunch of the cotton rolls, good to have around. Yeah, exactly, like I've got, as I think I told in a story once, um, I, when I bought them from my dentist or something, I, I had to get a whole big box. So I have more than I'll ever use. I, I give them to students and anyway, they're great. So when you're, when you're dealing with a, a new length of string, right? Um, when you got a whole bunch of string, it's easiest, especially in this top register, it's easiest to thread the string through and then tie the knot. And in this case, what I noticed with this C was that it's actually quite narrow because we have this lever mechanism. So to try and thread it around the lever mechanism and, and, and in, okay, I can do it here. I couldn't really do it with the, with a C. And so what I did was I actually just started by threading um, all the way down and through. And not Maybe not so necessary for the rest of these. Yeah, it's, it's slipping around. So but anyway, to thread it through this, side first because then you don't have to poke around inside and try and, and try and thread it through. Of course, if it's a very short length of string, you don't have that luxury. Um, and then I'm trying a knot. So instead of the normal knot that I do, which if you ever watched my heart changing videos, you'll have seen, um, I'm trying a knot that uh, there's a fantastic knot tying video by Amy at the Virginia Harp Center. And she shows the, the, the sort of the one I know. And then this other knot, and so I'm just tying it today just to get practice and have that option. I can kind of hear her voice as you do it. You, you create a twist. I don't know if you can see this. Let's see. You, you create a loop. You give the loop a twist. You stick this bit through. And again, I mean, go watch her video. Uh, maybe I'll try and throw that up in the chat. Um, if you want to learn it, this is not, not a good camera angle for that. But anyway, I'm trying that out here. I, and I've, I've used it a bit before, but it's not as automatic. And these little strings kind of fiddly. So again, that's the, the sort of the advantage of the heart buttons is that less fiddly. And especially if you, if you almost never change strings, they're a great option. So as she mentions in that video, when you're dealing with a first octave, these small little strings, you may want to do an extra hitch just to be secure. And now this feels good. And with these little strings, it's actually fairly easy to like, create a nice knot. With some of the bigger ones, it can be hard to actually pull strong enough to create a knot so that the dowel goes slipping around. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this through, try and maintain a little bit of pressure just to make sure that the, the dowel stays on. Oops, and I didn't quite align this, uh, this one correctly. And I'm going to do the little, you know, I'll thread this through and then I'll, I'll tuck this underneath so that it, it kind of winds over itself the first bit. Is that necessary? I know I've, I've seen harp texts who ha don't bother with that, um, but I don't know. It's the way I learned and it, it provides uh, a little bit of extra uh, mental security at least. 
Okay, so I got that, it's fairly tight. And then once it turns around that first little bit, I'm just gonna go, oh, guide it to make sure that it's on the, on it's gonna be winding on the harp side and going towards the harp as it, as it winds around. There we go. And then again, I can check. And you can feel there's a little bit of give there. I can check with a, you know, with a, the with a lower ones to see how close we're getting. So now it's, it's nearly at A flat. And I'll let you get my tuner app going here as well. There it is. I find often with these high strings what I that sometimes they have a hard time getting picked up and, and if I play them with a fingernail uh, it somehow cuts through better for a lot of the tuners. So these fluorocarbon strings, like any synthetic string, nylon, fluorocarbon, whatever, have a lot of stretch compared to gut. Um, so the recommendation actually uh, had a student tell me the other day or like a few months ago with those fluorocarbon strings is to you can try tuning them a whole half step up so this is supposed to be b flat i could tune it to b and that maybe helps accelerate the stretching process because again it can take a long time for them to stay in tune in fact some of these like this whole harp hadn't been played is on my you know two months away um but it was pretty much in tune, except for some of the ones that had recently been uh, changed. So I'll go ahead and tune this up to a B. I'm gonna check this. And I'll tune this up to a C sharp. It's gonna rapidly come down. Um, I don't know, maybe not doing the whole harp like that at once to avoid putting like, too much pressure on the on the. I don't know because again like you could some people tune their harp to C for example with all the levers down so that B would be a B natural. So I go ahead and, and trim the uh, string off immediately. Um, uh, so you've maybe seen harps or seen pictures of harps with a bunch of strings like wound around and, and a bunch of strings hanging around and that is so in theory especially like with gut strings, if a string breaks, and certainly if it breaks up here, you could then uh, create a little a little um, splice and reuse this length of string. Or if it breaks down here, you could then potentially use the string from this breakage all the way up if you hadn't cut that part there. And, and so in, in theory, it's like it, um, it gives you a few more options. And so this is particularly prevalent anywhere where it's really hard and expensive to get harp strings that people will get in the habit of doing that. I, I, I don't, can't remember ever having a situation where it broke uh, early enough, you know, or that, that that would have affected me, but other than I'm also, it's not been a problem. Like I've had spare strings and, and, and yes, strings are expensive, but I'm able to get them and they're not that expensive in Canada. Um, and uh, anyway, so it's, it, of course it looks much tidier and, 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 and yeah, so I'm not, I'm not really worried about this because I feel confident with these strings that the knot was good and that it's, yeah, it's, if it breaks, it's, it's fine. So I'll go ahead and trim it just because it looks tidier that way. Um, let me pop that link in chat. Uh, this string changing link just, just to have it. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of the best string changing links, I think, uh, videos. Um, where do we go to? There we are. Josh Lane's going to say something. Paste. Okay. There we are. Yeah, catching up on it. Let's see what's got it. Uh, I certainly, yeah, I certainly don't have a perfect pitch. Um, Hey, thanks, thanks, uh, Karen from Switzerland. Um, and so these these little dentist rolls. If you search on Harp Tuesday for how to change a harp string, you should see them. But 
uh, they sort of look like this. Uh, sorry, let me bring up OBS again so I can see whether you can see that. Uh, this direction. Okay, there we are. There we are. They kind of look like this. Um, so here's like here's a whole bunch of them in here. Uh, and, and I guess, yeah, dentists would put them to, I don't know if they still use them, uh, to do something in your mouth. Um, but they make a nice soft anchor. I know you could also use like strips of leather. You could do uh, whatever, whatever you want. Somebody mentioned once maybe the concern of, of putting some sort of sound absorbing material inside the body of the harp. And, and I think that's, I mean, that's plausible that maybe it creates a bit of a, uh, could absorb some sound. The advantage of something like this, as opposed to the, the normal string end, is there's not so much chance of it creating a buzz, right? Because it's not going to vibrate against the body of the soundboard and create sound that way. Um, and it's also just easier to tie a knot and have it stay on this than it is like a, a string string anchor. Um, if that makes sense. Uh, let's check in here. Mm -hmm. Hello from Richmond, Virginia. Oh, excellent. That's where this harp came from. I mean. It came from France, but okay. So we've done that one. We're going on to the next one. A little slower than normally would be. Um, okay, bring it down. Of course, trying to remember which one. You know, you don't want to change a string that you've just changed. You can see this one. They were strung with that little wrap around on the on the, on the end. There we go. Align that one. Take the bottom out. Should be able to just untie this. There we go. Put that in the garbage. Uh, do some dusting. So yeah, I, I, as I say, one of my main purposes, uh, apart from the fact that I think these strings are definitely due to be changed, is um, I want to do the regulation. I might do another little live stream of that next week. And the recommendation is always to have new strings when you do regulation or, or somewhat new strings. The theory, as far as I know behind that, is that over time, uh, and especially maybe with the gut strings, with the pedal or the lever mechanism moving against the string, it might cause some indentations. And so the, because the regulation is trying to make sure that when you shorten the length of the string with a lever or with a uh, pedal mechanism, that it moves at exactly half a tone. And so the string might actually, with this indentation, it might, you might, the regulation might be perfect, but then when you put new string on, it might not quite be perfect. Uh, yeah, all right. So, um, which I think, again, I think is, is probably true, maybe truer with the gut strings. Um, and if, again, if you're going to change the strings anyway, it's, it's, then that makes sense, that order to do it and change the strings first, then do the regulation. Um, I'm picking up some dust here, so that's good. There. Great. All right. So now we're on to the A law. Again, I'm going to put it through here first. Um, uh, Polish, but grew up in Greece. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Um, there's a beautiful, so Ravel wrote uh, a beautiful set of four Greek songs. And then Salzado, I think, arranged them, supposedly with Ravel's uh, approval, um, arranged them for harp and voice. And I, I played them once for someone's graduating recital. But they are beautiful, um, beautiful set of, of Greek songs, of course, arranged by a Frenchman. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely would like to get an opportunity to play them again. Okay. And of course, when I think of Greece, um, I think of Gerald Durrell, uh, My Family and Other Animals. He's, he wrote three books. Of, he, was a, he was a naturalist, um, zookeeper, and he wrote three wonderful books about his childhood. He and his family spent uh, several years in Corfu when he was, when he was younger. And some, yeah, some beautiful written books made it sound very idyllic. Um, I have not been to Greece yet. 
uh, maybe, maybe, uh, who knows, maybe this year I will be in Europe again, and maybe I'll get to Greece. Okay, so let's see. Now I'm threading this through, but it's not through the lever mechanism, but I think there's enough space right now to kind of, kind of, uh, kind of finagle it through. Uh, but I might have to, yeah, I think maybe I will just try and thread it through there. And so the good thing about doing something like this, if you've never like, changed all your strings and, and feel that it's time to, is that hopefully by the time you're done, you feel relatively sanguine about the whole process. That, you know, if you only have to change a string once every three years or something like that, if you're, if you're so lucky, um, it becomes a pretty, can become a pretty stressful situation because but if you know you've forgotten what it was like how to do it the next time you have to do it um, whereas if you do a whole bunch of them hopefully some of that then starts to become automatic and stick with you and it's not such a stressful process you can hear it stretching out as the knot gets tighter and here again, here I could play the G sharp here to match the A. I'm going to tune it a little sharp for now. And then turn that off. Put this one back in its, its little container. And check in with the chat here in a moment. Um, what, what music are, are you all working on at the moment? I've been really enjoying picking up the Mozart uh, Sonata Number no. Eleven again. Also working on the Regnier Peace Symphonique, which is something that uh, I've worked a little bit on years ago, but never, never really learned. Um, but I've been working on it these last couple of years. It's such a great piece. Getting ready to perform it this fall. Um, there was a culture of the heart, but nowadays, uh, due to the history, there is no more. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess the closest I've been to Greece has been. I was in uh, the in Cyprus, in the Cypriot part of Cyprus, um, and uh, yeah, there was some harp, but not so much. The Durrells in Corfu, yes, I they made a, they made a series video series. I never watched because I don't want to. I have my own internal image. I never. I don't want to uh, have that changed. But yeah, uh, does Excalibur have any wire strings? Yes, Victoria. So the bottom eight are nine. Nine, ten, ten are wire strings. Um, I did a video, I think, changing them to listen for any difference. I'm actually going to try a different brand of wire strings, and I'm not going to change them today because I don't have those. Um, I, I'm cheating on WC uh, with Bach on a six-six cross strung. Cool, yeah. One of these days, I want to I want to try some cross strung. Um, and yes, you feel you actually own the harp once you do the maintenance. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I mean, I think. It's, 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 just, it's, it's just nice to feel that you can tackle these things like this and, and that it's not so intimidating and not so possible. Okay, on to the G. Uh, just got it, same range as a Ravenna 34, 6'6 six, six cross drum. Very cool. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, so the whole, the whole cross drum, right? Again, these sort of cross drum or triple harps. Uh, I actually got to see and briefly play on a triple harp in uh, New Zealand. Uh, again, these sort of solutions that people came up with to deal with a chromatic question, because if you have one string in, in a sequence like this for every note in the chromatic scale, it an octave becomes huge, and, and how can you play a scale smoothly, and, and the range either becomes s a small range or a huge harp. Um, and so that, that question of how do you get the chromatics on the harp uh, the, the, the sort of the answer that became the most common answer was to change the length of the existing string, either with a lever system or then with a pedal system. But you can have the cross strong where you have like sharps and flats or, or both or whatever, uh, two, two sets of strings taking up kind of a similar space but strung like this. Or the triple harp where you have the, the outside white keys and the inside row is black keys. Um, 
so yeah, interesting these different different ways that have been attempted or done to to sort of deal with that chromatic question. Um, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Um, and so yeah, dusting away, dusting away. Uh, because I'm talking, as I say, this is taking a little bit longer than it, than it normally would, but that's, that's okay. Um, and again, just by doing it, you know, you get, you can start to become more comfortable. And especially like the other advantage of starting at the top is you're dealing with these tiny little strings where you typically get a huge length of string enough for potentially four, certainly three restringings. And so if you happen to muck up and, 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 and do something weird or something and it doesn't, doesn't work, you've got a whole bunch of uh, extra length as backup. All right, so we're doing this little knot again. We create a loop, we give it a twist, pass the string end through that and the anchor through that and pull it tight. And then this is still, I think, thin enough that I'm gonna put another Another hitch on it. There we go. That feels quite secure. Put that through. And let's see how easy this is to thread through the lever mechanism. Uh, the string. So I have a part Tuesday video in progress, as it were, um, because I got some of the Selby Lion and Healy uh, just, uh, uh, it's an Italian company, I think, uh, Avila, uh, who has now done this, uh, they're calling it biocarbon strings, oops, made out of, um, so a, th a synthetic that's derived from sugarcane, and they've been available for lever carp, I think, uh, like the, I know the Lion Healy Drake is, I'm pretty sure it's starting with them and some of the Selby uh, lever harps, but they come out with a version, a formula, I guess, a recipe for pedal harps, and I got it. I got a chance to try in in Wales at the Harp Congress. They had a, a Style Thirty, which is the model that I actually have, strung with them, and I got a chance to play on that. And, and so they they feel a lot like gut. So unlike, say, a nylon strung pedal harp, which, uh, uh, you know, you really notice that difference and uh, not really my cup of tea. I guess I'll use this as well. Um, they felt like gut and they sounded pretty good. And so I don't know if it's still on sale, but uh, Lion Healy was introducing them uh, at, I think, $169 for a set though it didn't, didn't include the first octave. So I got them and I've been experimenting with them and I've currently got them on the fifth octave, but I put the second octave on and then decided I just, I just didn't like it. Um, but they are potentially a compelling, a compelling option if you um, they might be a compelling option if you live somewhere where the climate is not good for harp strings nice i have a student for example uh, in, in indonesia uh, he's not in, in indonesia at the moment but where so many breakages right i know in brazil as well the humidity is tough tough on the harp strings and the idea of like a fluorocarbon string, for example, is that it's, uh, I think the humidity just doesn't affect it. And so you might certainly be willing to sacrifice uh, like a slightly worse sound or whatever. And I like the feel, I like the feel. Um, if they don't break. Anyway, so I'm gonna, I'm doing, gonna be doing some more, a little bit more experimentation than do a Heart Tuesday episode on them. Um, you know, Uh, 
Falsicle and, and the, yeah, the whole uh, play L versus Rard. Falsicle right now. Excalibur, Dusty Strings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're both beautiful harps. I thought very, very seriously about getting a Dusty Strings. Um, ended up getting the Excalibur. Uh, one of the things I love about the Dusty Strings is the um, is the the legs that they typically come with legs and, and actually you can get a variety of adjustable heights of legs um, because this really is a little bit even though it's a tall harp it's a big harp it has no legs and it's a little bit too short for me um, so I have I have a, a little little riser that I often put it on um, yeah they're both they're both great harps I mean I, I do I do love the sound of the Excalibur on this most recent trip uh, I played on a whole bunch of different lever harps for different harpists in the wild episodes but then in Tasmania uh, the person there who was who was helping with Harpist in the Wild, driving around and scouted up spots and stuff, uh, she has an Excalibur, and so yeah, I was I was just like, oh yeah, yeah, I love I love this sound, right? It's it's a it's a beautiful sound, and, I, and again, I love the, the feel of it as well. Um, but but I love the dusty strings uh, as well. They they are the beautiful sound, and um, and yeah, sometimes it's also just what what you. <laughs> what's available rather than waiting two years if there's something that comes up uh, that you like the sound of and that's available right now and, and of course also price price concerns as well um, so yeah, lots, of, lots of great harps out there and you know, in Germany in particular right now I feel like there's this huge uh, amazing number of, of great uh, harp makers like individual harp makers doing some amazing things as well and lots of innovative things like small, this size, uh, lever harps with pedals and stuff like that. So, uh, but again, if, if you're in North America, it becomes potentially a bit, uh, a bit difficult and expensive, especially when you're just dealing with an individual maker to, to try to get it, try to get it into, into North America. Um, all oh right. And Victoria talks about the dusty strings. Leg lengths. Uh, ah, Karen, you're working on an arrangement of, oh yeah, Bach Bell's Minuet. <laughs> nice. Oh, the, the, right, the Luna. And I think, um, I think, uh, Kalanesh, um, Uh, who is it that has one, right? Um, isn't that terrible? Carol, Carol, Carol Coppice. She has one, right? I think um, one of these Lunas, which is, um, yeah, this kind of like sideways soundboard so that it, it becomes much, you get a bunch of strings and a good sound, but it's, it's, it's much more portable. Um, they look really cool. Uh, I know at one point somebody was selling one in Montreal. Uh, a used one that would show up on used harps in Canada. And um, yeah, it looked very tempting. I seem to have lost one of these. Too much talking. Not that it matters, I've got a whole bunch. Oh no, there it is, okay. So yeah, some interesting, interesting sort of travel options. Um, so you, you like it then? It's, it, it sounds good? Um, yeah, it looks really, really quite interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, on this recent trip, I didn't take a harp with me. Uh, just because, so I would have, I would have tried to take my little uh, um, harp E, but I just had too many plane flights and different airlines and so I know Air Canada is pretty good about uh, traveling with an instrument you actually get to board early and um, but again you are to a certain extent always always at sort of at the mercy of the individuals um, on that flight or at, at the counter or whatever so had I just been flying uh, directly to Auckland and then back home again I, I, I would have taken it but because I was going to do a bunch of flights and not all of them were actually booked before I left and, and different airlines and I didn't end up taking it with me and that was okay there were a couple times where I, I would have loved to have like a that sort of small portable harp but 
often, again, some amazing people on that trip often I had a harp uh, lent to me or, or made accessible to me. Um, so that worked out okay. But it is fantastic to be able to have a harp to travel with. And of course, yeah, to have a, like a 34 string travel harp is amazing because then you get to play maybe the repertoire that you are playing at home. Uh, it's just a little bit awkward getting it around this lever. It popped, lever mechanism that popped out. There we go. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, yeah. So that Luna, Luna, I will have to check out. I'd love to try it myself. Um, all right. F. And again, like sometimes you hear that little creak as it, as, it, as, the, as the knot tightens, but it's a bit startling, but it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> And again, that, so that I, I've been changing my gut strings as well on my pedal harp, and, and of course the nice thing about gut is it holds so quickly, right? It doesn't stretch that much. Um, sure, you maybe have to tune it, but it's, it's like out just a little bit rather than being out a, a whole bunch. Um, whereas synthetic just keeps stretching and stretching and stretching. So that's where, like I do, at least with these fluorocarbons, the idea of, of tuning it sharp a half tone has seemed to work quite nicely um, in terms of sort of accelerating that stretching process. I know with gut strings as well, you can also really pull the string if you want. My, my very subjective and anecdotal experience is that doing too much of that potentially uh, lessens the length, the, the, the length, the longevity of the string, that it may break more quickly if you do that. So I'll do that if it's if it's a case of oh okay I need to perform or something and it's, I've just broken a string, but in general I don't I don't tug on it that firmly um, to stretch it or something, um, but that could again that, that could be completely wrong and that could be no problem. Um, yeah, it says I love watching your Harp Tuesday videos. Thanks, Mia. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, I love doing them. Uh, uh, let's see. back here um, Una is hard to locate I played on an Una is that no I think it was an Una in Japan so there was a couple there uh, well a woman who plays the harp and then, and then her partner um, reached out to me uh, to set up a harp Tuesday not harp Tuesday harvest in the wild video and she has an Una and it was beautiful uh, yeah, yeah, really very, very responsive, um, very easy to play, right? Like a really nice responsive sound, satisfying sound. Um, I find I find the Selvi uh, lever harps, I like the sound. I feel that they're somehow a little bit, they feel a little bit unsteady sometimes, just the, the way the feet are set up or something like that. Um, so, I mean, not a problem like this, this was fine, but it, yeah, sometimes they, they just give me a slightly, unsteady feeling somehow I don't, I, I don't know um, but uh, no it was beautiful so look for that video um, sometime uh, probably in May I think there was another question in here as well uh, something about something about gut strings did I miss that um, oh Victoria saw the heart for sale in, in Montreal yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Did somebody have a question about gut strings? Um, I thought I maybe missed a, missed a question on that. So anyway, pop it in chat again if, if you did. Uh, yes, new strings. So I did that video on, on, on changing the wire strings on this and trying to record it and see if you would hear a difference. And, and really the, the answer was no, not so much on the video. And it's always kind of interesting uh, just so I thought about that then with trying these other strings on my pedal harp and, and I, I recorded that right and, and that first of all maybe the recording even though I'm using a really good mic and everything um, doesn't 
ac quite accurately reproduce what we're hearing with our ears. Uh, but then you think, well, maybe it's all subjective, right? It's all in our mind. Uh, and then also maybe there is a difference, but maybe it's, it's so I would hear it as I'm playing, but maybe then somebody listening wouldn't actually hear it. And, uh, but then again, if, if you're experiencing this difference when you're playing, that can affect your sort of motivation. And, and of course, it's good to feel, feel that the sound is what you want it to be. Um, so yeah, I anyway, but just tricky, tricky, this whole sort of, our mind can be quite powerful in terms of affecting what it is that we hear. Um, uh, Karen, so yeah, I was talking about the, the, the bio, these biocarbon, these, these sugarcane ones. Uh, I, I'm currently testing them out and I will be doing a Harp Tuesday episode on them. Um, uh... Oh, Premier Strings. Did I ever do a video on them? Uh... So Premier is is just the same. They're, they're like they're a gut string, uh, same as Bobrand. So Bobrand, of course, is is has been this sort of staple in terms of gut strings. And there was a period, I don't know, maybe six, seven years, eight years ago now, where there were a there was a bunch of bad bow brand strings a bunch of bad batch or maybe it was <clears throat> mad cow disease and uh, or, or new regulations so they couldn't guarantee the quality of the gut they were using and blah, blah, blah. various conflicting stories but anyway the end result was that people were having there were a lot of breakages right so gut strings do break but for example the, the long longer ones like third and fourth fifth octave or fourth and fifth octaves or whatever, should not really break. Um, but people were putting new ones on and having them break right away. And, 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 and sometimes, I, I was lucky because I didn't really get any bad ones, but I did, I think I got like a second octave C and you could just tell that it was, it was weird. And yeah, it broke sort of almost right away. And, and so this was happening. And, and, and of course, it wasn't as if all of them were, were bad, but there were some bad batches. And I, I would love if there was some sort of labeling on the packaging of, of when it was produced, or maybe even a batch number, right, for their own Q and A. But because sometimes you buy a string and maybe it's been sitting around the store for five years, or, or maybe it's, it's has it just been produced. Um, anyway, the this was happening and, and so, uh, the Virginia Harps Center came out with their own house brand, I guess, but it's a, it's a French company, uh, probably the same one that produces the strings for the uh, Camac gut harps, gut strung harps, and so with Premier strings. So they've got their slightly different gauges, some of them are slightly different thicknesses for the same string than Lion Healy, and I think also that formula has changed over the years as well. Um, sorry, let me just bring this up. sharp at the moment not super sharp but a bit sharp um so they came out with with premiere and it, it, so since then uh i think the the bull brand has solved their quality control issues uh, i haven't heard reports of all these string breakages and i certainly haven't experienced that myself um so but we're left with a couple options and certainly in north america of of i think very similarly priced bull brand or premiere um and i've used both uh I think actually right now I've got Bobrand on the second octave and Premier on the third octave. Um, again, because the gauge is slightly different, in theory, the regulation then is going to be slightly different. So if 
you know, if you've just had your harp regulated with Bull Brand or Premier, you would you would want to maybe use the same kind. Or if you're about to get your harp regulated and you're thinking of switching from one to the other, you would want to, again, get that strung with that to start with. Um, where are we on to? D. Uh, I haven't really... I, I know you'll read some reports of people saying, oh, I love the Premier sound or I love the Bull Brand sound. For me, I haven't noticed a, a big difference. Um, I think they both sound great when they with new strings, uh, and maybe the premier strings, I felt after a year didn't sound as good as Bull Brand, um, but again, that's pretty that's very subjective, right? And 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 uh, yeah, if you're changing them every year, it doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so so as I say, I've, I've I've used both, and I will continue to use both. I'm sure. Um, did, was that, that answer the question? There we are. Um, excellent. Um, all right, I think we're on to the D. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> yes, trying to, uh, Victoria said she would mess up changing strings while talking. Uh, <laughs> it gives that extra little bit of load on one's brain, um, but uh, that's okay, it's okay. You're keeping me company. Um, Connie. Yes, right. Connie, that's an excellent question. Connie asks, have I ever broken a string and had to use a neighboring string? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, of course, I always try and keep a, a good supply of, of replacements, but it doesn't always happen you might break a string and realize oh you have no more of that string left or you had a, a length that maybe you thought was going to be enough but it doesn't quite uh, fit um, and so in this for example I don't know if it's the case with, with this brand but at least with the previous brand the, the A which was always breaking and the G are actually the same gauge the same thickness so in that case it doesn't really matter whether it's called an A or a G it's the same string and if you search for Lion and Healy, I know I found a, a Bull Brand a gauge chart on um, Clive Morley, uh, the UK harp store. It's yeah, it's not always easy to find, but you can you can find a gauge chart, which will show you the, the thickness of each string. And what you'll see is often so certainly with a pedal harp, the Bull Brand um, uh, string, each string is a slightly different gauge, but it's often not that much. And so I have absolutely on, on pedal harp used a neighboring string. I've even at times had like two C's if, if maybe a D broke and I didn't have a D or, or sometimes even not a C like a B on, on the upper octaves, which is a bit tricky because the visual is hard. But um, so yes, it's definitely a thing you can do. And uh, in some cases, again, in some cases, depending on the harp and the string, it might in fact be that they're both the same gauge and so it doesn't matter. And in some cases, when you get the replacement, maybe you'd want to put that on um, just so that, yeah, it wouldn't hurt to just put it on so you have the correct gauge and then save that other one. Um, if, obviously, if like if, if you're putting on a, let's say you're, uh, how would that work? Let's say your A broke and you had a G that was close to the same gauge. You could put that G on, but that's the case where maybe you would let's just stretch enough, but like maybe you wouldn't trim it or you'd trim it like a, quite a ways out so that it would have enough length that you could put it on a G then if you got a replacement, restrung the A and then you'd have that length already tied and ready to put on a G if, if, when it breaks. Um, yeah. Well, the, remember the video where the string snapped? Yes, boom! I was playing the um, Carnival of Venice, the Code Foil Carnival of Venice and bang! A low wire string broke. That was a bit of a viral video. I think Two Set Violin actually featured it on one of their Try Not to Flinch videos. Um, and I also memorably had a, a wire string break at a school concert. So I was playing for, I think it was an elementary school, and I was playing a shortened version of the Moldau. And right on the, I think maybe starting the second to last page, the low B broke, 
But that was a case where I didn't need it. I think I, I think that piece didn't need it. So I was able to just finish the piece. And then that was the last piece of the of the concert. So and then I took the string off, of course, and I remember there were a bunch of kids who were like, oh, can we have that? Ah, they were very excited. Um, yeah, it was great. It was great. And again, it creates a memorable sort of event. Uh, I, I remember a concert where, so I guess it, I, I don't think it was a wire string that broke, but a string broke and, and, and I still get people coming up to me saying, oh, I remember. That was, you know, that was the best part of the concert. I mean, not 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 in a not in a bad way, but just that it it made it memorable, right? You know, you, you were part of it in a in a way, right? This part of this shared experience, and um, again, just just like performing. Yes, this is a D. Okay, just like performing. If it's just, it's all in how you think about it, right? Because it could be something that stresses you out. And you get all stressed out, and, and then the audience gets stressed out as well. But if instead it becomes sort of this event and this educational thing too, you can talk about what the strings are made of. Um, or, or, the, or the lever pedal mechanism or whatnot. And, and then, it, then, it's, then it's fine. And so it's just like mistakes when you're playing. The more relaxed you are about them, sorry, the better off. The, 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 then the, that's fine. You know, the, the audience takes their cue from you. And so you can see how already, right, all these other ones have gotten quite flat. Uh, on one of the... So I... On my trip, I did one lever harp concert in Ruby Bay, a little community in uh, the South Island of New Zealand, next to Nelson. Of course, I'm from BC and Canada. We have a Nelson here as well, so it's all a bit confusing. Um, and at one point, uh, I started the piece, and oh, I had a wrong lever setting. And I think I might have just stopped and started, or I just said something, oh, wrong lever, put it down, and, and I, I know there was a harp teacher there, and she was saying, oh, it's so good, because that's what she always tells her students, you know, it's, it's not, it's not a big deal, right? It's not a big deal. Um, something like that, there we are. Um, <laughs> uh, changing strings. Ogden constantly broke strings. Ten a month. Whoa. Wow. A few. Uh, yeah, so obviously, like, yeah, sometimes, again, maybe maybe there's a burr, like, if a string is constantly breaking uh, down here, maybe there's something wrong with, with whatever it's coming through, or if it's breaking at the lever or the pedal or the bridge pin. There can be, of, of course. I mean, strings break, right? Strings break. Um, but then, yeah, it could be a bad batch of strings, which I think is what happened with these A's and G's, or it could be some sort of problem with a harp. Um, and Martha asks, how do you organize your strings for storage? Um, I, so, yeah, I have each set of strings separately. So here you can see, here's this stack of strings, and here's, I think, the third and fourth octave. So they're just, in a stack of, of as you know in sequence and I have something similar so like for my pedal harp my, my gig bag which has all my spare set of strings and like all the third octaves with a rubber band around them all the second octaves with a rubber band around them uh, in that case often there's more than one um, of, of a particular string um, and then I have a some backup ones for the gut strings of older gut strings or like I think I have an emergency backup of maybe fourth and fifth octaves because I don't keep a whole bunch of extras of those uh, of ones that I've like that are been fairly new and I've taken them off and I just keep them as a backup. Um, so yeah, but just little 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 clumps of, of often organized individual octaves. Um, makes sense. So I think I'm gonna skip. I think this region is the one that's broken quite often and and many of them are new. I'm gonna skip down to this E. 
Um, ooh, RRR says, I had a violin string snap and hit me in the face. Yay, glasses. Yeah, that's scary, eh? So, um, yeah, kind of terrifying. The violin, right? All that force, and it's right there in these wire strings. And, and with a harp, I've been really lucky because I've had nothing happen. And the thing with the wire strings is here is that there is, um, so it's a steel core. I think all the typical wire strings are steel core, silk wrapped, and then wire wrapped. So the steel core will break. But and the and the silk wrapping I think will break or whatever. But but the the wire wrapping won't break, um, so that sort of restrains. And you can see that that video with the, the wire string breaking, it it restrains the um, how far the string might move, uh, and, and yeah yeah. So I I yeah I. I I think the harp is actually pretty good in terms of not injuring you with a string string breaks. Okay, just have to think here for a moment. So first, no, first, second. Um, harp is kind of weird in the sense that, I, and actually I think these aren't labeled by octaves, but the octave starts from an F. Why? I don't know. I don't know the history behind this. So this would be the first octave, second octave, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Um, yeah, kind of weird. It's, it's this own little thing. It's not the sort of scientific notation of like C4 or whatever. Um, and, uh, okay, so, but I need to find out where we are here. Here we are, here we are. An E, great E, D. Oh, right, and then this C, I don't have one of those. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, I'm gonna put this over here. Uh, Mm. Uh, ah, Victoria, so Victoria was at that concert and she said, I can't even remember you had the wrong levers. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? It's like, well, that was great. Um, <laughs> to a place with the same strings. Right, right, right. So uh, the question was, uh, you, Connie mentions that uh, Typically, a harp will have recommendations of replacing it with the same strings that it was strung on. Um, and, and what is my opinion of changing from nylon strings to gut or, or vice versa? So, oops, I need to clean this first. Um, that is an excellent question. So, I, like, I'm not I'm not a harp maker. I'm not an engineer. Um, so, my understanding, like, so for example, say gut nylon and the fluorocarbon all have different properties so that to get a sound uh, and even even like even with gut right like, let's say with gut if you wanted to get a certain sound say middle c you have a range of how thick that string would be and then therefore how much tension it would be right so you can get that middle c with a with a thinner string and less less tension on it uh, or a thicker string and more tension on it right and so, for example, with, with an older pedal harp, you might uh, string it with a th thinner gauge. So there's, there's like, a, if, or if you have an arard, right, you're often stringing it with a, the middle C will be a thinner gauge than a modern pedal harp. And, and then with nylon or with fluorocarbon, the, if you had that same gauge that you had is with gut, it, there would be a different amount of tension required to get the same pitch. Um, and my understanding is that fluorocarbon somehow needs the most tension or puts the most pressure on the soundboard. I, 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 if you're interested in all of that, uh, I know Rick Kemper, Sligo Harps, has some fantastic information out there, for example. Um, but so that the, the, in other words, it's not, as it's not as if you just have one sort of gauge for one particular say middle C, there's one uniform gauge, all nylon strings will be this gauge, or all gut, or all fluorocarbon. So as a harp maker, you have these choices of like how, what gauge do you want to use, and what length then also as well, right? Because, I mean, if this middle C were shorter, we could still get middle C, but that would affect the tension maybe, and also could affect the potential gauge. Um, so all these factors go into, I guess, designing the harp and designing the strings, and and, and and that's where, in theory, yes, 
presumably it's quite specific in terms of you want this type of string and this type of gauge. Uh, again, de depending on the harp, it might be fine to try something different. So as I mentioned, the, the premier strings uh, have often have a slightly different gauge than bow brand, but it doesn't matter like that. It's, it's, it's fine. Um, if you, so some harps, so like with nylon, my understanding is that generally that's putting less tension on the soundboard than gut. And so therefore, if you have a harp that's designed for nylon, it's possible that you could cause structural damage if you put gut on the harp. Um, or you'd have to string it with a, a lighter gut. So in other words, even if it's a middle C, you wouldn't want to get a pedal harp middle C, certainly, or even a labor harp middle C. Maybe you want to use the equivalent of a, a G or something like that. Um, so that would, that's, that, that would be a concern, right, in terms of uh, putting on a different set of strings than it was designed for. Um, but then some, would, some harps would be fine, or you could put whatever you want. I did try putting a gut A string on here when, you know, with all those breakages. And it didn't sound very good. It's interesting, right? It just, uh, I think maybe I tried to use the same gauge or maybe I just used a second octave A. Um, but anyway, it was, yeah, it was interesting. It didn't, didn't sound that good. Uh, so yeah, it's not as if it's always interchangeable, but in some harps it might be. And, and in some harps potentially, yeah, we got enough for a second, second string. It, it, you might have notice a huge difference of sound potentially. Um, I know the Lion Healy pedal harps. If you get one new, they're typically strung with nylon on the top octave, potentially even nylon on the top two octaves. I like gut all the way up, uh, but again, the with the nylon, it's it's maybe a, a brighter sound and easier to play. And so if you have one or the other, you, by switching, you might say, oh, wow, I love this sound. Like I love the gut sound there, and I love the greater resistance and the ability to play with more strength. Um, but so if you have nylon and you change to gut, you might say, oh, I love this. But at the same time, if you have gut and change to nylon, you might say, oh, wow, this sounds so much better. So um, that's a case where, uh, that's a case where you can certainly, they're interchangeable. But in general, getting into some longer strings now. Takes quite a while to bring them up. Sorry, I'll finish that thought in a moment. Okay, that's a bit sharp. Um, so, but anyway, in general, uh, like, it, it, if possible, check with the heart maker and, and, and see what, what their recommendation is. Um, however the gauge, the more stress is next under exactly, uh, ha, <laughs> put piano strings on a, on a guitar to make it a bass, it exploded, yikes, um, yeah, 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 uh, with a cross strung because you have, um, like if it's 6-6, six, six, that means it's, it's, What is that? Is that 12 per octave then? So yeah, you're like, um, well, five sevenths uh, more than a normal, uh, you know, you're almost double, right? Two thirds. Uh, this, the number of strings, you got so many more strings, same as like a, a double strung or, or a triple strung, you got a lot more strings. So of course, like certainly triple strungs are, the tension is much lighter, so they're more lightly strung. So again, the gauge, the middle C would be much thinner than this middle C which is already a thin gauge. So maybe it might be similar to this, but this I think is about the equivalent of a, a G or an F on a pedal harp. The, the, sorry, a, a G or an F up here on the size of the string. Um, 58 string, 12 per octave, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the wood on my style of 30? <laughs> so I have to tell you, um, playing in New Zealand, so I was using for a lot of the tour then, 
I was using a, a beautiful Style 23 with a very interesting story. It was kind of a rescued harp. It had the woman who owned it had died and it had been sitting and unplayed for a number of years. But Kim Webby, who makes pedal harps, um, which is quite unusual to have an individual make pedal harps, including the, the whole pedal mechanism, and he makes some amazing harps. Uh, anyway, amazing harp, harp person. He'd done a bunch of work on it and it was sounding fantastic. Um, this is a D. We're going to do a D. Okay. <laughs> and um, I got asked so many times, what is what wood is it made of? And uh, now maybe I'm wrong, but I felt I, th th this was... I was asked this much more often than I had ever been in any other country. Uh, and I, I could be mis... Like, you know, maybe it's been a while since I've done a bunch of performances. Maybe I'm just not remembering. But I felt that in New Zealand they were very interested in in the, in the wood and, and how, what it was made, what it was made of. Um, and the answer is I, <laughs> I believe it's bird's eye maple, but I, I I'm not a hundred percent sure. So uh, talking about my my uh, style thirty, sorry the the wood because it, yeah, there's this beautiful distinctive grain. I love I love the look look of it. Right, it's 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 so gorgeous the grain. So I believe it's bird's eye maple. It was interesting because at Harpfest there was a style thirty, a new style thirty, uh, in natural. So just sort of the sort of the white, white yellow natural color, which I'd never seen before. And uh, Oceana Harps, the the woman there, was saying, because I think she has a natural thirty. She was saying, um, if I remember correctly, that yeah, the theory is that you never know how the grain is going to turn out, right? And so with with this, all these harps, like the style 30s, for example, oftentimes, it, it, like if, it, if, the, if it doesn't look good, if the grain doesn't look good once you put the harp together, that's where you get the black style 30s or the mahogany, where it's all these sort of painted solid covers, because then you don't really, the grain doesn't matter so much. And, and then it's the, like the one I have, the what do they call it, right? Because it's a brown stain, walnut, I guess, or whatever, or certainly the natural ones, you know, the grain needs to look good because you're really going to see that. And I, yeah, I love seeing like this as well. I'd, I'd actually originally been interested in uh, a black Excalibur because uh, I like, I, I don't know, I like black. and, and um, But this was the only one they had. And I actually, I actually love being able to see the wood grain, right? I think that's, that's so nice. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with how this one looks. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hopefully he says you know, your brother's a luthier. So yes, you have to admire, admire the, the wood and the instrument. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, search for Kim Webby if you're, if you're interested and check out his, his harps. Um, because it's a beautiful design as well. And as I say, it's it's pretty unique. I know there's a someone in Switzerland, I think it's a family business these days. Uh, or maybe there's two, right? Because there's David, David Harps, and, and I think maybe somebody else, but you know, again, like very small or, or almost in, or individual or whatever, um, people making pedal harps, but it's, it's quite rare, obviously. And, and again, you just have that whole pedal mechanism um, which is a lot more involved than, um, than the levers. Uh, okay, so now these strings are getting uh, big enough and it's becoming a bit tricky to tie them. Now, I might not have to do a second hitch here, but I think I will just for security. I could also go and get a, a pair of pliers to get a better grip on this end. I'm a little bit worried that this is going to slip. I'm going to put this second hitch on. Okay, that seems okay. Um, in theory, I think, like that last one, I just about had enough length left for a second set of string. string. And yeah, right, like if we take this down, it, the knot actually takes up quite a bit. And so, I don't know, it's worth being aware of that and then and then just trying to maybe tie as uh, economical a knot as possible. You know, or, or stretch it pretty pretty tight and whatnot. Just because why not have, a, have that make use of the extra 
set. Um, and then again, we gotta thread it there in between that. Yeah, here we are. Yeah, yeah. There's enough for another, another string, I think. The worst, or, or it's always exciting when you get a string and you realize it's your last string, and as I say, it's, it's maybe just barely enough. And so, again, they will stretch, gut strings included. And so sometimes if you if you grab it with a pliers and they try to turn a little bit to stretch it and then maybe pull it through a little bit more, like loosen it and pull it through a little bit more. Uh, and, and, and yeah, it can be a bit of an adventure. Um, You heard that, but nice big crack. So I think that was the knot slipping, or, or not, well, not, uh, like uh, tightening. Um, I could take a flashlight and look inside, but it's so if you get to, if, if it seems to be constantly like you're, you're trying to bring it up and it's not getting anywhere near pitch, it may be that the knot is slowly un, undoing itself at the bottom, um, and eventually, wow, well, the string's gonna come through. So you could. Again, get a flashlight yeah, or kind of look and see what's happening. This one seems to be holding. Something else to be aware of, especially with the synthetics, is to you don't want it to wind up so much that it goes into the body of the harp. So there's a couple, can you see here, maybe sort of, um, the some of these, like this C, this A is getting a little bit close to the body of the harp. It's not a problem, but um, with the synthetics, because they can stretch so much that it's potentially over time, if they're on there for years, they could start gradually getting closer and closer and closer. And certainly you don't want them getting into the body of the harp. So it's easy enough. You just unwind it, pull it through, maybe not completely tight, but you know, a fair amount, and then string it up again and cut off that excess bit. So the, the biocarbon strings that I was testing, they stretch a lot. So with the fifth octave, I had to do that multiple times. Like it would wind all the way to the side of the harp. I would unwind it, stretch through, do it again, and they're, and they're still stretching. I may have to do it a, uh, another time as well. Hmm. Okay, so that was not... suspicious of that not then um what is this the d hmm. well seems to be holding I'm just going to leave this on again just in case uh, it changes and I want to have to do, redo the naughty again or something. Um, <laughs> you have to be so, Victoria says, you have to be so careful with black finish on harps. Right, damages and things are very visible on your black uh, line here, you need pedal harp. Right. Um, yeah, that's something I guess to be aware of as well when, when choosing harp is, is, is being aware of the type of finish and how much you're going to see stuff. This one, oh, it has a little ding here. Uh, I knocked a music stand into it. Um, and I think a luthier could, could, could fix that. I just haven't, haven't got around to doing it. But you know, that, that first sort of ding in your harp is always the worst one because it's so pristine. And then, oh no, and then, and then maybe at a certain point, you're like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> it's what's one other little, little bump or something like that. So, but uh, yeah, no, it's always good to take care of your herbs. Um, uh, would not do that in the creaking. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? So again, these barocarbon, what I found with the second octaves is that they would do a bunch of creaking and it was quite, quite uh, disturbing. Um, <laughs> uh, black has the pedal sound more. Yeah, 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 black is beautiful. Um, So with, with 
with these at least. Like again, I'm a little hesitant to turn tune everything up a half step just because that's maybe putting quite a bit of extra pressure on the frame. Um, I did, the last time I did a Lieberhart concert, or online concert, I think, um, I had a string break maybe the day before or something like that, and I did tune it up that half step and that helped it actually stay in tune. But um, yeah, in general, I, with these fluorocarbon or with nylon strings, if you are planning on changing strings, try to schedule quite a bit of time between the changing the strings and when you actually want to perform. So as I say, I'm going to try and regulate this then, and it's maybe a bit optimistic to try and do that next weekend. Uh, it should be fine, it should be fine, because again, as long as it's staying in tune somewhat for a five minute period, it'll be okay. But but yeah, certainly something to be aware of that they can stretch quite a bit. All right, I got that one done. Um, and then the C is apparently, I have changed that somewhat recently. And the only ones I have left are the are the original. Uh, what is it? Um, these these strings, the Kirshner uh, harp strings from Germany. Um, I think I will change it. It's interesting because you can really see this one is the is quite opaque. Opaque. You can hmm, transparent. Sorry, it's quite transparent. Uh, I think I will change it just to change it. Um, and I actually it looks as if I have two spare sets of the C's. Yeah. So might as well might as well use them. Um, so harps. Are you? I know some of some people are already eyeing new harps. Um, where are we? Just do the C, D, we're doing the C, okay. Have, have, have the rest of you got any dream harp you're eyeing or travel harps or, or whatnot? Um, Janice, you've got, of course, the new, new cross drum. Um, Daphne, 47 SE. Nice. Um, I would love to have the, the one of the those um, the carbon fiber, the single action pedal harps that I, that one that I played in Austria, I think would be amazing harpist in the wild harp. Uh, I think she was saying it probably start around 18,000 um, euros. So it's not exactly the impulse buy that the harp E was. Ah, so here I used a string button on, there we are on this one. So it must've been just enough length to, to put on. And I didn't want to mess around with the dowel and I, I just used a, a string button. So yeah, a student sent me a, a few of the dusty string string buttons. Um, I think you can probably use a normal button potentially, right? You don't necessarily have to use their specific one, but it's a brilliant idea. I think just because it makes strings potentially a lot easier and less intimidating to change it especially if you're only doing a few of them. So the harp that I started on, the, the Aoyama, the little Aoyama lever harp, uh, so I've had it now over 30 years and, and had maybe four broken strings. I don't know, very few broken strings because it's strung with uh, nylon and quite a loose light tension. Uh, so yeah, if you, if you almost never break strings, then uh, having some string buttons sounds perfect, right? Um, and and yeah, they work. They work really well. If you haven't seen them, you should watch the, the ad. They did a little goofy infomercial ad for string buttons. They had a lot of fun with that, obviously. Um, pretty funny. And and yeah, I think I think they they, they work great. Um, so yeah. Uh, how much did it cost again? I mean, eighteen thousand uh, euros or something. So, yeah, I am, I am, 
I am shopping for a new pedal harp at some point. It's not urgent. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, my, my pedal harp is will turn 31 this year and it's in, it's in great shape. Um, but I am, if I find the right pedal harp, I will buy it. Uh, I just, yeah, I have to fall in love with it. Um, and haven't, haven't come across one yet that I want to get, but it will happen at some point. Go. Um, just put in a pickup. Ah, oh, cool. I have, I have a, I have a pickup to install on this potentially. It's um, there's somebody I think in the Netherlands who sells uh, harp pickup on eBay. I have a student who had it, tried it, and it worked well, and it quite, uh, quite reasonably priced. So I have that, and I, I keep meaning to install it. Maybe I will do that in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's potentially actually quite, ha I mean, it's quite handy if you're doing Harpist in the Wild, because if, if you're happy with the pickup sound, then you can just record directly from that. And then you don't even have to worry about putting the recorder inside the body of the harp. Um, you're just recording from the pickup. And, and again, that should eliminate, you know, wind and, and airplane sounds and stuff like that. So... Plus, you can play around with all sorts of different different effects. All right, so I, I'm doing the double loop on this one as well. I don't know. Uh, at this point in this octave on gut, I would be doing just one knot and not doing the second hitch. Uh, but these are certainly thinner gauge, as I say, and the, and the synthetic strings, the fluorocarbon, are they don't they don't quite stay as easily, stay tied as easily, so. I want to do that one just to have a little bit extra, extra peace of mind. Um, I'm still doing this, put it under to have it wrap around itself as it gets, as it gets uh, wound up, and then let's see if I can pop this. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah, plenty of room for another length. Nice. That's partly also some of the creaking is uh, an artifact of the, the wood dowel potentially. Like again, I feel one of the maybe potential advantages of the cotton is less creaking, though I certainly got a bunch with the with a um, biocarbon, so maybe that's not a thing. So you can see how it's kind of handy, as I say, to, to string down like this because you can I mean I could be looking at my tuner but this is just an easy way to get it relatively in pitch oh I said I wasn't going to trim this one but I did okay <laughs> Another thing to be aware of is try to make sure you have the replacement string. You actually have a replacement string before you take off the old one, right? Um, if you you know you get in the groove of doing a bunch of them, but like instead of before taking off the previous one just to or the next one just to double check that you have a, a spare string for that. All right, there we go. And we're on to the B, and I have that. Excellent. Um, scared to get one in, in case it's not right for your harp. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, especially if you do the whole sort of drill a hole in the base of the harp for the for the pickup. Uh, it's it's a bit bit potentially scary. Um, my plan would be to install it on the soundboard which in this case i think was just uh, like a sticky material so you could remove it and then and then see how i like it before doing anything permanent with uh, with a 
pick up and right the part you plug into the your your amp or whatever you're running it through um but uh yeah yeah and i mean it's yeah, it definitely opens up some interesting things, but then maybe are you really going to use all these, you know, are you going to run it through a bunch of effects uh, pedals? Um, do you need it to be amplified? Uh, maybe yes, maybe no. Um, uh, I mean, I would have, so the Excalibur, like I think all of the Kamek Lever harps, has a, you can buy it with a pickup installed. Um, and. I would have done that. I think I would have just gone ahead and done that. Had, oh, or I guess had this one had one, I, that would have been fine. Like I would have paid the extra for it. It's just I wanted a harp right then, and this was the one that was there, and I didn't want to uh, like wait for a different one or anything like that. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but for me, as I say, I haven't, I haven't really. because I guess I have the two small electric harps now and, and I haven't felt a huge need for a pickup on this one, um, but it would for sure at the very least be great for Harpists in the Wild. So I should, I should get around to installing that one um, and checking it out, see how it sounds. All right, we're on the B, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you can get, ah, Victoria says you can get a clamp for the dusty strings pickup so that you don't, okay, we just have you don't have to um uh, you don't have to uh, put a hole in your harp <laughs> uh, okay so this looks like whoa we're really we're really pushing it so i'm going to try and tie as efficient a knot as i can maybe i'll use the the, the um string button but I efficient as not as I can, and I'm not going to do the extra hitch, and we're going to see how that goes. So it's just hard to get a grip on this string end. This is where the knot I'm tying, I think, is slightly more efficient than the sort of traditional knot that I'm more familiar with. Yes, as we get to these bigger strings with it. Okay, so that, I think, yeah, that was that knot I was worried about. Uh, that wasn't, ah, excellent. Ah, adventure! <laughs> Let's see when the chat catches up with that. Um, <laughs> that was the knot I was worried about, right? Because it came, came out of the bottom, uh, so it wasn't quite wasn't quite securely tied. Um, uh, all right, so we're going to hope that this one stays tied. And then we're going to fix that D. Eek! Yes. Well, it's, it's not a problem, right? Because um, we're just going to have to tie a better knot and then and then put it back on. That will be fine. I kind of want to get a pair of pliers here, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get a pair of pliers just to be able to grip this. So I'll be, I'll be right back. Be right back.
Uh, let's see what we can do here. Uh, got this. We're going to give it a twist. Put this through. And then we're going to try and grip that part with the pliers to get a nice grip. There we go. Stick this here. That's great. And we'll try and tighten this. Okay, there we go. Might end up using the string button here, but let's see. Oof, no, that doesn't look very good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's check again what our length is. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, let's try the string button. So the string button, I think I have instructions for that over here somewhere. Because here, this is a case where, just like tying a normal knot, for me, I, I, I maybe used this once or twice, so I have to refer to this. So I'm going to this side is up. Yeah, DS logo side, Dusty Strings logo side is face up. Uh huh. Yes, and then we're gonna put the long. Oh, this is long. Yeah, yeah, yeah the short end. We're going to go through, all right, we have two options, big or small. Uh, let's check to see which one this is going to fit through. Oh, it fits through the small. Oh, no. Either one. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we put it through. And then we put it through. And then, all right, so we're going to keep the loop here. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Let's get a bit more of a loop. Okay, there we are. So we're going to put this through here. We're going to bring it through this one. Is that correct? Yes. Through this one. And then it's going to go through this. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. All right. Take a look at that. Um, so, let's see how that works. If I just check, yeah, okay, it's just going to be enough. So here, with this, of course, with a smaller length, I had to tie the knot and then put it through the, the body of the harp because um, there's no other way to do it right now. I just can't see. It's a little dark inside here. Uh, ideally, you're set up so you have some light coming from this side of the heart. There we go. Okay. All right. So we just have enough length and maybe even enough length to pop it underneath. Yeah. Great. Oops, so there. Okay, now I could, here's again, like if you just have a very small amount, you could hold it with the pliers. Don't think I need to do that. I think it's gonna go over it and hold it in place and it's not gonna start slipping out the top, but um, that is also an option when you have a small length of string left. Okay, and we're just gonna hope that this all works. Snacks? What was this? Snacks? Snacks? Nice homework. A little Josh in the background. Perfect. Exactly. Just a chill harp tuning, harp cha string changing. Yeah, so you can see, assuming that this holds, like, um, the advantage of that, the, the harp string, even for me feeling comfortable tying knots, just that it, they can be a bit slippery with this, um, 
with the with the synthetic strings and 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 I was able to hopefully hopefully um, use a length of string that might otherwise have been just a bit too short. He says too soon. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, <laughs> well, were you expecting such excitement? I don't know. Um, so yeah, that went. Well, I didn't quite have a long enough end, I think. Um, but it may have stretched a little bit. So, I can try it again. Oh, there's a wooden bell. Let's see if I can find the... I'm going to try the, the string button again. See if I can find it. See it. Um, and it's not under here, right? No. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to deal with this D first, um, because we have we have lots of length of string on that, and I just need to tie a better knot. And then we'll we'll mess around with the B. Okay. Uh, so. Okay, so I'm just needed to tie a slightly better knot. I'm tempted to tie the knot I'm most familiar with. Um, but I think we'll, we'll stick we'll stick with this one. Uh, so we're gonna give this a twist. We're gonna pop this. Uh, we're gonna give this a twist. And where is the snap emoji exactly? Twist. There we go. Okay, now we got a nice long length. Tie that. So it was it was this length amount here, I think, and if you can see uh, that I think just wasn't quite quite long enough. Um, and then I'm gonna put another hitch around it. That feels good. Um, and then yeah, we should have. Problem. So now again, because we're dealing with a short length of string, I have to put it through, and this is one is a bit more awkward because the the holes are like just in the wrong spot. This particular one is right where there is no hole. So I'm gonna kind of grip it between two fingers. It's a bit it's a bit uh, a bit curved from having been strung once. So and I'm gonna get some light on there too. There we go. Oh yeah, piece of cake. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Sorry, you probably can't see me. Oh no, you can maybe see my head. There we go. Okay. There we go. So we just have enough, enough length. We'll give this another try. So I don't mind this. Like it's 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 because it wasn't a string break right breaking right. It was just, just the um the knot, not the knot not being tied correctly. Uh, now this is one where I think I may take advantage of these pliers. Got it. And let's give it a try. Creak. I think I can let go of this. And now, actually, this is the D, right? There we go. Okay. Did I 
13 degrees, nice. The knot was not a knot, yes, exactly. Okay, I hope that that, um, hope that, that stays. I want to check, what do I have? Okay, so this is my only B in this particular brand. Um, so I am going to try and make it work. Um, I had this experience of losing another string end, you know, I think in New Zealand, and then it was it was in the base of the harp. I, just, I didn't see it the first time. So let's see, let's see where this could be. Um, it's kind of gone anywhere. Oh, while we're at it, let's check out that D, how it's looking. Uh, oh yeah, looks super, super good, no problem. Okay, um, where did it go? The mystery, the mystery of the missing string knot, button, whatever, button, string button, I don't know. Um, let me check this length here again. First, we have to find the string. There it is. Um, let me check the string length again, just to see what our options are. A fair amount, because uh, it's maybe stretched a little bit now that we <laughs> started to started to put it on. Let's try. Let's try. We're going to try a. I think this was the knot side. We're going to try tying a knot. Maybe I'll try tying a normal knot and see what effect that has. Let's see if I can get away with just, just the one hitch. It should be, should be fine at this length. Uh, hmm. I'm not happy with that. No, that one's... Let's let's okay. We'll try we'll try this. We'll try the the uh, other version. Bloop, bloop. Utilize some pliers here. Sorry, not much talking, just uh, struggling. Uh, it's a struggle. You know, we must suffer for our art. <laughs> okay, let's try that over again. Um, we must suffer for our art, but not too much. The old joke goes that somebody wants to become a great artist. I go to the master. Ah, the master looks at their artwork and says, ah. You, you, have not, you must suffer. You have not suffered enough. So the student goes out and suffers very hard. Suffer, suffer, suffer. Comes back, paints some more, comes back to the master. Master looks and says, Ah, oh, you have suffered too much. So it's a, it's a fine balance. Anyway, um, let's see. Let's see whether I can get this to stay. And again, this is where, you know, it's if, if I had more string length, it wouldn't be a problem, right? Um, I don't like that. This doesn't look very good. Um, let's try it again. Uh, let's see. Under the carpet in three years. Exactly. That's where it is. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to try just getting a really nice string end there. Beautiful. And then this. I don't know if you can see this at all, sort of. I guess I should be doing it over here more or something. Um, now I 
just doesn't want to stay. Um, let's say we put one like this. We do this. We do this. And then, okay, then we go. Yeah, there it will. There it will stay. But I'm afraid that's going to be maybe too much. Let's see. Whoa. Maybe just. Maybe just. Okay. Okay, we're gonna try that. We're gonna try that. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see if I can thread this one through. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we're going to give it a try with the aid of the pliers. Oops. Where'd you guys go to? Still there? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Let's just get OBS back. Okay. Um, with the aid of the pliers. So I'm not going to be able to thread it underneath. And it, this may not work. This may not work. Um, but we're going to give it a try. Just barely enough. I don't know how well you can see this, but it's just barely enough to come through. But again, there's this idea like if you look at the surrounding strings, there's quite a bit of windings, right? So we, we know that it will stretch if I can just get it winding without it slipping through. So we're going to give it a try. And again, hopefully the knot holds as well. Okay, so far so good. Oh, this isn't winding on the correct side. I don't have time to do that. I can continue to hold this just for security. Because of course, then you also have that failure point of maybe it slips through on, on the top as well. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but it's possible, aha, right? The, 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 the thought always is that you do that and then it maybe stretches it, again, hopefully not from the knot beneath, but anyway, stretches it enough that now we have actually quite a bit of room at the top. I'm a little suspicious of the, the lower knot, quite a bit of room. And now, yeah, I can easily pass it under and do that. I think I will utilize the Again, though. And uh, and then then it will say right because again if you think about the other ones they do eventually or, or like I mean right right immediately in a sense end up stretching enough oops, that you have quite a bit of uh, extra wiggle room so now with it passing on top like that, it should lock it into place. And uh, yeah, we'll see. see how that goes. How's that doing? It's not raising up a pitch at all, you know that something's slipping. Another session? Yeah, 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 for sure. have a bunch of windings.
notes in here. Yeah. Okay, well the string may have been stretched even more. I think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can locate this string button because I think it is the best option. I just need to uh, feed it through a little bit more. Um, but I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'm going to end the stream right now on that exciting note. Um, so we managed to do, what did we do? We did this, uh, we did these, I guess this one's already done. We did six strings here and one, two, three here and this fourth one almost and still have a bunch more to go. Um, but I'm going to take a little bit of a break, I think, get some tea. Um, find this, locate this string button. And if not, I'll just use a different B, um, but I'm going to give one more try on this. So <laughs> safety goggles, no, no, it's fine. Um, anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, yeah, so I, assuming I get all these done and they're somewhat staying in pitch, uh, uh, I, I do think I will try and do like a little background live stream like this. Um, well, I mess around with regulation. So maybe next week, but uh, keep an eye out on my newsletter um, and I'll keep you posted. So yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, enjoy your snacks and um, I'll see you next time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. See you guys, see you guys later. Bye.